Uh, thank you, Mr. President. This week, we celebrate Salute to Veterans Week to honor all those who have served our nation in uniform and their families who sacrificed so much for our country. This week's a particularly appropriate time for us to reflect on the importance of fulfilling our commitment to all veterans. Just as we invest in, just as we train our men and women during their military service, we must make the same investments when they return to our communities, hang up their uniforms, and embark on the next phase of their lives. Uh, this institution seems always to be willing to vote money to send people to war, is a bit less generous sometimes in taking care of those veterans when they return. That should stop. This morning I visited Eastern Gateway Community College in Youngstown and met with local veterans, including Community College graduate Lisa Thomas. She graduated last May. She's now pursuing a four-year degree after getting a two-year degree. She's pursuing a four-year degree at Franklin University using her GI benefits. Community colleges like Eastern Gateway are an important way that provide, we provide our veterans with the necessary skills to find decent paying jobs. They serve as pipelines for veterans, in many cases, as pipelines for veterans for four -year univer to four-year universities. The GI Bill's education benefits are critical to investing in, retur in returning service members. They help veterans return from war to learn new skills. As a result, these men and women help build our middle class and led to our nation's dominance in the second half of the 20th century and into this century. But veterans, as some find out unwittingly, have a limited amount of time before their GI benefits expire. At crowded colleges, it, it general education requirements and prerequisites often fill up quickly, and it can take several semesters for that veteran to secure a spot. Waiting for a spot in a required course is a luxury many veterans don't have because those veterans' benefits could expire. If student veterans are unable to finish their degrees before these benefits expire, they may end up being forced to pay thousands of dollars in out-of-pocket tuition and fees. The veterans who served our nation without delay should not face delays in getting their education. Many colleges and universities, including Youngstown State, the same place where the Eastern Gateway campus in Youngstown is located, a place where many Eastern Gateway students complete their degrees, offer veterans priority registration so they can get the courses they need before their benefits run out. All of our colleges and universities, two-year, four-year, pub public and private, need to follow Youngstown's, Youngstown State's lead. If student athletes have priority registration, we can surely extend that privilege to those who have served our nation. That's why in the coming months I'm introducing legislation to ensure that all veterans, all service members, and their qualifying dependents can use their GI benefits to their full potential and be guaranteed priority registration. Our veterans have earned these benefits. We must ensure that all of our veterans, all of our veterans like Lisa Thomas, are able to take full advantage of them for themselves and for their families. It's our duty to ensure that when veterans return home, they have the education and training and access to jobs they need to fulfill that potential. We have a duty to ensure that those returning from service to our nation get the care they need when they come home. As the first Ohioan to serve full time, a full term on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, I've worked to ease the VA backlog and put in place a better system. The shortage of care providers has been especially pressing for veterans struggling with a brain injury, the so-called invisible injuries. We know that when our country a decade, a dozen years ago, uh, went into Iraq and our leaders said, this will be a short war, uh, our country, our government, our administration, our Congress failed to scale up veterans of veterans' hospitals and veterans' care and increase the capacity that we now find is, is too small. That's the importance of making sure we do this right. The sh nearly 300,000 veterans in this country struggle with post-traumatic stress. Out of an estimated 300,000 traumatic brain injuries, there are 25,000 cases of mild traumatic brain injuries. These cases are hard to diagnose and document since there's often a lack of visible evidence. Without proper care, some 8,000 veterans each year take their own lives. 154 a week, 22 veterans a day commit suicide. What a tragedy. 
Last week, I was proud to stand with my colleagues in this body in support of the Clay Hunt Suicide Prevention for American Veterans Act. I look forward to President Obama signing that bill later this week. It's our duty to take an active role in increasing veterans' access to quality mental health care, and Clay Hunt will help ensure that those who put their lives on the line for us have a lifetime of their own upon returning home. We have a sacred trust between our government and those who protect us all. Mr. President, I yield the floor.